Hey, Dan Larson here. In this video, I would like to talk about my favorite tool, my favorite distortion device, and that is Isotope Trash 2. Now, I've been using this device for years now because, you know, I'm mainly a bass head guy and I prepared three different sounds that I want to show you my favorite things about this device. So, in the first example, I set up this very simple neuro drum and bass groove where I use Trash 2 multiband distortion functionality heavily. So, this is the groove. My second favorite thing in Trash 2 is the Convolve module, which can create very exciting new sounds, very exciting new tones to your signal, whatever you put it on. So for this scroll that I'm going to show you now is having its character heavily from Trash 2 Convolve module. And my third favorite thing in Trash 2 that I'm going to present here is the built-in filter envelope mode which is basically an envelope follower built into a filter module and for this plucky or bass tabby kind of sound heavily uses that filter feature <laughs> Okay, so I'm sure that this little example just grabbed your attention, so don't wait no more and jump into it. Now before we jump into it, let me analyze the user interface very briefly. So the first time you open Trash 2, the preset selector window pops up where you can select from different presets like aggressive, experimental, heavy and stuff. So these are very, very high quality presets. Now, if you want to select from different tools, different devices in Trash 2, you need to click on these knobs and the corresponding window opens up there basically. Now please note that not all of them are activated. If you want to activate them, you need to click on this button. Okay, so we have two filters, a trash distortion module, a convolve module, which is crazy good, a dynamics and a delay module. Now I'm not going to cover everything because this is not a course on trash 2, only I want to give some inspiration to you. So my favorite thing is obviously the trash module where you can distort your stuff and the convolve module. And also what I really love in trash 2 is the graph knob where you can change the order of these effects of these tools. So as you can see, if I want, I can start the whole chain with the distortion, then with the filter and the convolve, then another filter and the dynamics and the delay. So this is the order that I can change any time basically. If I want, I can distort the whole sound at the end of the chain. This gives you very, very big freedom. Okay, so on the side, you can set the input level and the output level. Now, the input level is very, very important. I'm sure that you know, but if you didn't know, let me tell you that, that the amount of distortion that you want to apply on your sound is heavily dependent on the input level. So, for example, if your input level is very, very high, distortion will react so much more aggressively. This is why it is very important to play with the level of your input signal. And also, obviously, you can go into trash module and play with the pre, the drive. So, for example, if you select a preset, or a distortion type, you can play with the drive and the style of the distortion. These are also very important things for the final result. Now let's go back where you can apply a limiter and with the drive at slider, you can decide how much you want to mix your distorted signal with the original signal. And of course you can bypass the whole effect, the whole stuff that Trash 2 applies on your sound with the bypass button. Okay, so if you go to Trash, you have two stages where you can distort your sound. And here you can select different distortion types that you can fine tune by moving these sliders and you can add your own breakpoints so you can create crazy good wave shapers here basically. Also in this area you can tweak more this shape, for example choosing a square and as you can see we can add some crazy, crazy shapes here. You can use bipolar, so the possibilities are basically almost endless. This shape, by the way, gives you very, very noisy results. So I don't recommend you using this kind of shape. And when you have done with the shape with the distortion, you can go to stage two and select a very new kind of distortion. For every shape, you can apply a filter like 
subtracting the very highs and the very lows, which in most of the cases are very essential because these distortions create very big amount of, I would say, unwanted frequencies. And the coolest part in Trash 2, that you can do this in multi-band mode, so you can choose different distortions on the very low end, on the middle lows or in the middles and the highs, and you can tweak four different bands, but if you want to activate them all, you need to go to options, and with the modules, you need to select band 4. Now I am leaving it like that. And let's check the filters. Now the filter is a very very nice thing again, because we have six independent filter dots or EQ dots that you can tweak in a very different way. So you can add modulation like an envelope and an alifo. I'm going to cover envelope in the third example. And you can select a whole bunch of filter types like clean, HP, BP, LP, resonant, retro, saturated, screaming, synth, even vovos, which are very, very cool. You can go to the convolve, and this is basically a convolution kind of thing where you can load in your own sound. So if you click on load, you can drop in your own sound, your own WIF or AIF sound, and trash to take the characteristic of that sound and apply it on your signal. This is a very, very cool way to create some very new and interesting tones out of basically anything. Filter 2 is basically the same that filter 1, only you can use two instances of filters, which is again a very smart thing. Now you can have dynamics and even you can use multiband dynamics, which is again a very very cool thing. So if you click on all, you can see all of the bands after each other and you can set up a very nice multiband dynamics thing, which if you are into bass production, you know that OTT, which is a, a multiband compression preset for Ableton multiband compressor. So then you know that multiband compression is very, very important to achieve a very nice and clean result on your heavily distorted sound and heavily affected sound. And at the end, you can have a delay, which is again, a very nice thing to have, but honestly, I don't really use it. Okay, after all this, let's jump into the first example. But just before we get going, I would like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. And let's check what I did to achieve this very very nice sound that you already heard in the intro. But now let me solo it and show it to you how it sounds on itself. Okay, so as you can see, I applied a whole bunch of effects here, but the main stuff here is trash too. So I'm sure that you can hear the core of this sound. I mean, the core of the effects is trash too. So let's analyze the preset. It is a very, very simple preset because I use only one stage of distortion in the middle band, which is a saturated gentle push preset or wave shaper shape. And I apply the gentle touch on the highs. So I boost it up just a little. And on the top band, I applied a drive capacity shape and crank out the drive and the press to end a lot bigger and lot heavier distortion. So let me show you the sound without these several bands, I mean without distorting these bands. So let me deactivate the top band now. So as you can hear it definitely adds some very nice crunch to the sound. And also it deactivates that crazy high frequency screech that the compressors generate because as you can see I have an OTT before Trash 2 which is a huge and very strong compression. But never mind, let's go to the middle band and let me deactivate it and you will be able to hear how big the difference is. And especially if I deactivate both of them The difference is huge. And besides the trash module, the distortion module, I only applied this filter to boost the low end very drastically. And the reason behind that is the same that I already covered in the intro, that the more you boost your signal, the input signal, the more trash to or the trash module will apply distortion on it. And this is the goal here, to have some very nice crunchy kind of distortion. And so boosting up the low end and crunching it will result a very, very nice overtones to the overall sound 
down but obviously you really want to chop off the very lows at the end because you don't want to have a sound that has too much low end and I also applied some peaks here that add some very nice flavor to the sound and this is all in trash too I think this is a very nice sound so let's check the second example so in this growl the main character is given by trash to convolve so let's look into it what we are having here the only thing is a little filter to boost up the very highs and the convolve module so i select one preset from the body folder and it is called intimate and basically this is all that i did here i only pulled back the dry vet so i'm not having the full wet sound now if you really want to go crazy click on load and try to load in your own sound let me go my project sample packs for example loop masters and let me find one sound that i made here like for my very old grow sounds bass sounds and just find one randomly like this one so as you can see trash 2 just loaded that sound in and let's see how it will try to grab its character and implement it on our sound <laughs> Now this may be not the best example because this didn't make our sound better but you get the idea you can experiment and try new things this is a very very nice way to achieve exciting new sounds and now let's go to the final example in this example i'm showing you how to use the built-in modulation in the filters so if you have a look on the filter here you can see that i'm having only one filter dot which is in clean LP mode and what I want to do is tell Trash 2 that I only want to leave the full color the full tops whenever the bass hits so basically on the transient and after the transient I want to filter it so for that I need to go to modulation I need to select this little dot here and go to envelope so if I click on off you can see that I just killed that second dot but if I go to envelope with that I can set the start value of the modulation and the end value of the modulation and with the threshold I can tell Trash 2 what is the input signal level when I want to activate that filter so let me show it to you in action so as you can hear with this purple line we can see the input signal level and within the starting and the ending position you can see a little ball running up and down which represents the modulation basically the position of the cutoff which represents the filter modulation now this is with the envelope and without the envelope you can hear how the tail of the sound is a lot harsher and contains lots of top end that I really wanted to just chop off but I wanted to keep the high frequencies on the beginning on the transient of the sound so this is where the envelope comes very handy and of course you can use a sidechain input to trigger this filter modulation and you can set the attack and the release time which is again a very basic thing for this kind of modulation okay so as you can see trash 2 can give you very very nice tools to shape and distort your sound and turn into a very different thing for example using the convolve module or the multiband distortion feature or even the filter that can create some very nice movement based on the LFO or the built-in envelope can just you know turn your sound into crazy stuff so if this presentation grabbed your attention go to the warp academy web store where you can find trash 2 and tons of other very cool softwares including tutorials courses and other stuff i was dan larson and see you next time guys peace